Hi, this is John Cressman with MonkeyUncle.com, and this is our Game Salad Vertical Shooter Tutorial. We're on episode 8. If you haven't done the other episodes, I recommend you go back to episode 1 and go through all the way to where we are now. Uh, that will get you caught up and also get your project caught up. Now, if you wish just to jump into this one, you can download the project from MonkeyUncle.com. Now, if you're coming in from episode 7, go ahead and save your project as Vertical Shooter 008. And today we're going to be adding some sound to the game and also a scrolling background. So we're going to start off with the sound and to keep track of the sound we're going to go in and create a game attribute. This is going to be a boolean, that's a true or false we're going to call this sound on and we'll just go ahead and leave it at false for now now let's go back home go into actors we're going to create a new actor we're going to call this HUD because we're going to place it on the actual screen HUD sound okay. now Remember we use the on-screen controls. We're going to go ahead back to the on-screen controls. We're going to go down here to images. I'm going to actually drag two images. The first is image 11 under line light. So it's line light 11 and line light 13. Those are basically icons for that's an off audio. That's an on audio. So we're going to go ahead and set this to off by default. Now I happen to know that the height and width are both 48 on this, so we'll go ahead and change that. And now we need to give it some actions. The first thing we do is create a rule, and we're going to say when attribute game sound on the one we just created is true we want to change this graphic to line light 11 that's the on graphic when it's off we're going to change it to this off graphic so if it's true we display this graphic if it's not true we will display that graphic okay We'll go ahead and type in a little description. Now we need to handle if they touch it. So if it receives a touch, and if that touch is inside, then we're going to do something. Now we're going to do something based on, I'm going to create a rule, based on its current status. So if sound game sound on is true basically what we're going to do is create a toggle switch so if it's on and they touch it it goes off if it's off and they touch it it comes on okay. so if it's true then we're going to change game sound on to false. Remember if it's true and they touch it, it becomes false. Now if it's not true then it means it's false and we want to change it to true. Okay so now we've just changed this attribute and that means that we need to double check and make sure that the correct graphic is being displayed so we're going to copy and drag remember that's using holding down the alt or option key and dragging it down and here's our rule that if it's true we display the true if we display the on graphic otherwise we display the off graphic All right. so let's file save that and we're just going to test to make sure that toggle is working so we go into scene play and now we have some room up here we can actually move this off okay. we have some room up here so why don't we place it there I drag it, 
and put it right there at the top of the screen. I'm going to file, save, go back home. So now I'm going to start game. It's off. I'm going to click it. Now it's on. Now it's off. Now it's on. Now it's off. Now it's on. And we died. So be careful when you're playing with the toggle. Alright, so now we have a sound on, sound off toggle. Now we need to add the actual sound effects. So we're going to do that in the rules that actually would generate the sound. But first we have to add, add the sound. Now we're going to go into the space shooter and you'll see a bonus directory and in the bonus directory are a few sounds. So we're going to copy over laser 1, laser 2, the lose, and the shield down. All right. So now they should all be down here. So now this is our fire laser rules. And when we fire, so we're spawning the lasers here, we will also want to add a sound effect. But we don't want it to play all the time. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click on positional sound. We don't want it to play all the time, so I want you to highlight it and click on create rule, and that should create a rule with the play sound inside. All right. And what we're going to say is when attribute game sound on is true, then we're going to play this laser sound effect. So only when the sound is on. If the sound is off, obviously it won't play. So um, this is the explode routine. So right before the player explosion, again, we're going to use the lose for this one. We're going to put in the lose. I'm going to change it to positional sound. Now click on it and click on create rule. And again, it's attribute game sound on is true. Then we play the sound effect. Okay, so when they explode, it's going to play a sound effect. Now we're going to save this. Go back home. Now we have to do the same thing for both enemy actors. Okay, so when they explode, we're actually going to use the shield down. Okay, again, positional, highlight it, click on create roll, an attribute enemy. I'm sorry. Attribute game, sound on is true, then we play the sound. And now to enemy two, here's our explosion. I'm going to put this right before the explosion. Additional sound, click on it, create role, an attribute, game, sound on is true we will play it now we also need to do an additional graphic I mean additional sound for this because it also fires lasers so we're going to play laser one create the rule an attribute enemy oops, sorry game sound on is true then we're going to play that sound effect so now let's see how it works out. I'm going to go ahead, hit preview, start game. And of course there were no sound. Start game, I'm going to turn it on. And I don't know if you can hear that, but there was in fact sound uh, playing on the on the uh, enemy. Definitely shooting.
Yep, I can hear it on the other two. All right. I don't know if, it, and I didn't actually hear it playing when the player explodes. So let's just double cut in here. Unfortunately, my sound is down because of the feedback with the with this microphone. So we're going to turn the it down now. Um, but it should be playing, and you can test that on your on your own. Now, I also said we were going to create a scrolling background, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go ahead, call this background, and open it up, and go ahead and make the size 256. This is just going to make things easier for later because I happen to know the graphic is 256. Now, the graphic we're going to use is again on the space shooter pack under backgrounds we're going to use the dark purple you can feel free to use whatever one you want but I'm going to use dark purple I know it's 256 by 256 and I want it to tile across the entire area because I'm going to change the size so it matches the screen or actually is a little bit bigger than the screen so I'm going to change graphic where it says horizontal and vertical wrap, we want to change that to tile. We want to come down here and make sure that these are both 256. Okay. And now we can change the width to 400, which is larger than the 320 uh, screen width. And we're going to change this. The screen is 568, I believe. We're going to change it, we're going to round it up to say 600. And we're going to duplicate that so it's 1200. Okay. And now we're going to add some very simple behaviors. I'm going to create a move behavior. I'm going to have it move down, which is 270. You could use the dial, but I prefer to type it in. We're going to leave the speed at 300. I'm going to say it's relative to the scene. So that's going to move it down at a speed of 300. Now we want it to scroll, so we're going to create a rule that says when attribute background position y is less than or equal to half of its height, so 600, then we're going to set the height, we're going to set the position, set background position y to zero and basically that'll keep looping it around now because it's twice that height you won't actually see it disappear so I'm going to go ahead and save that I'm going to go back to our scene play and now we're going to go to scene layers I'm going to create a new layer okay I'm going to make sure this layer is underneath the layer with everything else so I'm going to go to game and drag the background over top. As you can see, it obscures everything. I'm going to put it so that the very bottom of the screen of the graphic touches the bottom of the screen. It can be a little over it, that doesn't matter. But of course, it obscures everything else. So I'm going to come back in the scene, in the layers. Let's go ahead and test this out, and off it goes. Did you see the background? Let's go back to home, start game, and there it goes. Oh, and now I'm getting killed. So what happened? Well, let's take a look. So basically, it's scrolling downward. Okay, and we just reverse these numbers so when it's less than or equal to zero we're going to set it to 600. A little bit of my dyslexia there peeking through and now let's try it again. Now as you can see background keeps scrolling 
And now it actually starting to look like a real game. We have some scores, we have lives, and we have death. And that's it for this episode of the Vertical Scroller Tutorial. We'll see you again. This is John Cressman at monkeyuncle.com.